Oswald Chambers writes, The Bible nourishes. Give time to reading the Bible, and the recreating effect is as real as that of fresh air physically. Recreating effect. Reading the scriptures has a recreating effect. He goes on and he says, Five minutes with God and His Word is worth more than all the rest of the day. There is life that comes through the scriptures because the reality of Christ is seen there. It is not that the words on the page give life. It is that Christ himself gives life. Oswald Chambers writes, The key to understanding the Bible is not my intelligence, but personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He points out in John 5.39 that the scriptures testify of Christ. And in verse 5, I mean, chapter 5, verse 46, that Moses wrote of Christ. And then he says that Christ, being the context of the scriptures, shows us that we must see he is the only key word. We love to speak of key words. Jesus is the only key word. So in Nehemiah chapter 8, I saw some incredible parallels. The first one in verse 1 talks about them gathering as one man. <laughs> that immediately calls my attention to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. We are the one new man in Christ. So this could be a parallel pointing us to spiritual truths in Nehemiah 8 that can be applied to the one new man in Christ. Praise God. So it says that the Lord had given to Israel a book of the law, which means it's from God. All scripture is breathed out by God, from God to something to read. It's a book. There's <laughs> writing in it. Three, it's God's law. It's God's order. It's the divine alignment. It reveals to us God's heart, intentions, desires for man. In, chapter, in verse two, the scripture says that Ezra the priest was the one handling the word. The priest handles the word. And it reminds me of Jesus, our high priest. He's the one who dispenses the word to us. He is the final word of God, as Hebrews 1 tells us. But it spe specific, specifically reveals to us that it has to do with those who have understanding. So the word of God is only beneficial for those who have understanding. I believe that is a parallel we can pull from this Verse 2, where those gathered who had understanding, the ability to understand is crucial. Understanding. So verse 3, it says that early in the morning till midday, they listened to the word or there was a reading of the word. This shows us extended time in the scriptures. Ezra, the scribe slash priest, which can be seen as a type of Christ, he stood on a wooden podium that was made for this purpose and it was uh, on it was high above the people <laughs> podiums not only are in the bible but the imagery is amazing that the priest holding the word is above the people praise god may jesus be the great high priest who is that word of god be held above all of our lives as dietrich bonhoeffer in his classic life together said we live under the word of god submitted to it above our minds it's above our eyes. It's above how we see things. It's above what we have to say about things. It's above what we hear about things. It's above what we think about things. We live underneath the word. For the word of God, Christ himself, is above us. So uh, verse 5, you see the book is opened. They stand up and he is above. It's just this beautiful picture of the prioritization of Christ and his word. So he blessed the people and they, they lift up their, their hearts in worship. You see that worship and the word are right there mixed together. Verse seven, you see, this is very interesting. 13 people and Levites explain, scripture says he explained the law to the people, explain the law to the people. That is the essence of ministry. Taking what Christ, Ezra the priest, gives the word to these 13 people, these Levites, and they explain the word. So it comes from the great high priest and these Levites explain the scriptures. <laughs> the scripture says in verse eight, they read the law and translated it 
so that they could understand this is all ministry is, receiving from Christ the word of God and then explaining the word of God to people. This is called in verse nine, teaching. (laughs) Verse 10 through 11, this is awesome. The people heard the law and they mourned. In other words, they saw where they were missing it. But Ezra, the great high priest, Jesus, his type or figure, he says, the holiness of this day has nothing to do with sorrow. He says, eat, drink, and give. Do not be grieved, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. This has to do with understanding. The joy of the Lord is your strength. In context, has to do with understanding the word of God and putting it into practice. Grief takes strength, this verse is showing us. But the word is to bring joy and feasting and strength. It's not mourning and grief and fasting. The word of God is a feast and an enjoyment, literally, to have God in our midst and the expounding and understanding of who he is should create a party or two, praise God. This is the joy and strength combined understanding the word of God. Uh, Just to reiterate, the Levites, they calmed the people and encouraged them to rejoice. Eat, drink, share, celebrate, festival, because they understood the words which had been made known to them. Understanding brings great joy. Understanding of what? The word of God, the precious revelation of who God is specifically, that man, Christ Jesus. Verse 13, even the teachers of the law sought more insight. The more we is revealed to us of Christ, the more we long for revelations of Christ. Revelation begets revelation as glory brings you to glory and faith brings you to faith and strength comes to strength and grace is upon grace. The more we see God in the precious scriptures, the more we desire to see God in the precious scriptures. Uh, Look what happens when they follow this longing to know him more. The scripture says they found, they found, As they sought, they found. They desired to know him more and they found more of him. And look what happens here. As they searched, this is verse 14, they found and they restored the feast of booths, which had not been practiced since Joshua. They found the ancient way. They saw this wonderful unification with God that had been lost and they reestablish it. And in verse 17, it says, this brought great joy. (laughs) There is joy, joy, powerful, glorious strength and joy in understanding the word of God. And the scripture says in verse 18, they read from the book of the law daily. Oh, give us this day our daily bread. How can it be separated from coming to Christ the head? and hearing from him, receiving from him. I I really feel like the word of God, specifically revealing the man Christ Jesus and experiencing the man Christ Jesus is the recreating. It is the joy of life. It destroys those sorrows. It brings us into a feast of the knowledge of this God who is joy himself. I remember reading C.S. Lewis said, God does not give joy. He is joy. I pulled a quote here from Oswald Chambers. He says, he says, what, what a man's, when a man's heart is right with God, the mysterious utterances of the Bible are spirit and life to him. Spiritual truth is discernible only by a pure heart, not a keen intellect. It is not a question of profundity of intellect, 
but of purity of heart. He actually says here that there's a danger in our religiously reading the Bible instead of relationally reading the Bible. And he, ta- he calls it literalism. He says it produces incarnate dictionaries. It produces not saints, but fossils, people without life, with none of the living realities of the Lord Jesus inside of them. He also writes here, beware of bartering the word of God for a more suitable conception of your own. Trading. Oh, buy truth and do not sell it, the scriptures tell us. He says, beware of interpreting the scripture in order to make it suit a prearranged doctrine of your own. And I love this one. The reason some of us are not healthy spiritually is because we don't use the Bible as the word of God, but only as a textbook. He says, the Bible is a whole library of literature giving us the final interpretation of truth. And to take the Bible apart from that one supreme purpose is to have a book and nothing more. And further, to take our Lord Jesus away from the revelation of him given in the Bible is to be left with one who is open to all the irreverent slanders of unbelief. It is Jesus that is the whole point of the scriptures. The Holy Spirit makes the words of the Bible spirit in life to us. It is this man, Christ Jesus, that we long to know and walk with and obey. And he has revealed himself as the word incarnate, revealed in the scriptures. So God, I pray you help us understand these mysteries. Show us yourself in the word. May we hear you May we feel you through faith in the scriptures and the reception of your life into us. Praise God. Praise God. There's another quote I just just remembered. Oswald Chambers says about receiving life. I think I should read it to you. It says, he says, The mere reading of the word of God has power to communicate the life of God to us mentally, morally, and spiritually. God makes the words of the Bible a sacrament, literally the means whereby we partake of his life. It is the secret door of communication or the communication of his life to us. Praise God. Blessings to you guys. Remember, we meet on Tuesday nights. Uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to join us, it's wonderful. We sit in the scriptures together. We pray. It's a wonderful community. Um, Join us. God bless you guys.